Hey, what is up everybody? Good evening now. Well, the day continues and I managed to squeeze in a watch of a found footage movie on Tubi from 2016 called Capture, Kill, Release. This movie is written by Nick McAnulty and directed by McAnulty and Brian Allen Stewart. And it stars Farhang Gahar and Jennifer Fraser neither of whom I feel overly familiar with, but I'm kind of hoping in the years since this movie was released that Fraser has found some better roles because, well, I shouldn't put it that way. This isn't a bad role, but she's so good here that I can only hope that this opened up more avenues for her. But I don't want to go getting ahead of myself. So to set things up, the premise in this one is that a young couple for reasons that are never fully explained or sort of gone over in any sort of like detail. They just want to plot to murder a random stranger just for the sheer thrill of it. It's a little bit like the premise of that older movie from the early 2000s or very late 90s called Murder by Numbers with Ryan Gosling and Michael Pitt. Very underrated little thriller, actually. Worth a watch again if you haven't seen it in a while. But anyways, the early goings have some sort of like, you know, vague sort of callbacks and echoes to that movie. Although the key difference here is that that movie was about two people who are friends that might have some sort of like implied, almost sort of just subtextual romantic sexual relationship in Murder by Numbers. Here, this one in Capture Kill Release is actually about a couple. Like, it's a relationship full stock. And the way that the relationship disintegrates over the course of this venture, which I don't think should come as a surprise to anybody, I don't consider that a spoiler. But that's what makes up the sort of core of this movie, is just watching this relationship slowly disintegrate as one person gets more and more into what they're doing, and the other person becomes more and more fearful and apprehensive and disgusted. The build-up to the big moment where they carry out their little venture is very interesting because it gives you a chance to see how their relationship kind of has a bit of a weird dynamic happening already. There is more than one sequence where they deliberately film themselves having sex and in one occasion, it's where they've just gone over the details about how to properly drain the blood from a corpse into a bathtub. And yeah, as they're mapping everything out, they end up sort of having, you know, full-on coitus right there on camera. Now, you don't really see any real nudity in the sex in this movie. But in that context, you know, coupled with the fact that it's being done in this found footage format, it gives it this weird amateur quality that makes it feel, for some people I imagine it'll feel maybe just a bit too real or uncomfortably voyeuristic. But if you can get past that and you're not the prudish type, and you can sort of analyze the way that the two of them assume certain roles while they are having sex, you start to see how the groundwork is being laid in some ways for how things are going to play out in terms of who's more dominant and who is more submissive. But that is also not to say that it precludes one of them to coming out victorious over the other because as you find out when you watch the movie, that sure is not the case. Plus the way that things progress as the movie goes on, you also get the hint that in some respects for one member of this relationship, a more kinky and role-playing form of intimacy can sometimes be a smoke screen for concealing your real identity because you would assume that being married and agreeing to do this together that they would already know each other pretty well and one of them finds out the hard way as this whole thing progresses that they didn't know this person as well as they thought they did and in a lot of ways they didn't know themselves as well as they thought they did. And that's really where the movie's big strengths lie for me, thematically speaking, because there's not a whole lot of suspense per se. You get the usual beats that you might expect, where early on they're both enthusiastic and the general tone and banter between the two of them is a little bit more lighthearted. 
there is kind of a funny little discussion about finding the appropriate kind of stranger to pick on and murder. Scared of picking a victim that the woke crowd is going to be upset over like they wouldn't be upset otherwise when someone got murdered, you know? They're almost more worried about how the press is going to characterize them as murderers than whether or not they get caught, at least early on. Things do get darker and of course you expect that, but the interesting dynamic here is, again, watching their relationship disintegrate, but also seeing how, in a lot of ways, the female character's loyalties shift in terms of her intimacy and her commitment from her husband onto the camera, onto the act of capturing, you know, their behavior itself. Nothing is as fulfilling, as titillating, or as gratifying for her as being seen, knowing that she's being watched. Speaking of being watched, you get to see a whole lot of the damage on screen here when they carry out their murderous act. I mean, the murder itself is not the most violent thing you've ever seen, but when it comes time for the disposal of the body, they show you everything in detail and lingering on it for a long time. And for being a low-budget found footage movie, the practical effects here are very effective. They felt seamless to me. And I think it was a smart choice on their part with the budget that they were working with. Rather than trying to make the gore wild and elaborate, they focused on very simple forms of amputation, but just lingered on them for a very long time to the point where watching, you know, someone sever a limb with one of the little saws actually starts to feel uncomfortable to watch. So you are right in the husband's shoes as far as feeling the fear and disgust that he feels, just having no choice but to wallow in this incredibly morbid situation. Quick trigger warning for anyone who is concerned, there is an animal death in this at one point when the characters kind of take their warm-up run for the big murder. To be fair, it's handled about as delicately as I think you could handle something like this without sacrificing any visceral impact, so I will give them credit there. The movie does have its share of padding. There's a bit of a subplot involving a character who is essentially the plan B victim for their little murder experiment. The movie never really convincingly charted a path in terms of, you know, giving us a reason why this guy would fall into their crosshairs and why he would when he does. And it almost ends up giving the movie a little bit of an episodic quality where it feels like it's trying to just sort of rehash itself again quickly in the last five or ten minutes. This movie's an hour and 36 minutes and honestly I think you could have probably shaved at least 10 or 15 minutes off of it. It would have made things move perhaps just a little bit more briskly on the front half and then on the back half I feel like it would have brought it to an ending sooner that would have been more effective. I mean there's one moment that I don't think I'll spoil or get into here that I feel would have been the perfect point to end it but it does go on for another five ten minutes as I mentioned involving this other character who is really, at the end of the day, not all that important to the movie. It's probably something else that they wanted to put in there to make the whole thing feel a little more morally challenging, but the premise already does that on its own. Like, I feel like that was a case of maybe doubling down where you didn't have to. Still, on the whole, I can't deny this is a pretty effective little found footage horror movie. And Jennifer Fraser really succeeds in creating a character who is repellent, malevolent, and who you just love to hate in all the right ways. And Farhan Gahar finds the right note for his character as the husband because his character, even though he is the less dangerous, less twisted of the two, and he's the one who has the biggest arc in terms of how his morals and his perceptions shift, at the end of the day, he still isn't quite what you can call a good person. He's not sympathetic. He's, if anything, just pathetic, which is obviously a different thing. The way that he and Fraser play their scenes together, they never feel the least bit self-conscious, and they do a good job of making us feel like this is a couple who have actually been together for a little bit of time before this all transpired. This combines the tools and mechanics of a snuff film, essentially, with the framework of a disintegrating relationship, and that's not going to be to everybody's taste. 
but if you can get past the sex and the very frank depictions of body disposal, I think that you'll find that this will definitely leave you with some food for thought. And this is either like the worst date night movie you could pick or the best, depending on how you roll. Anyway, it's free to watch on Tubi, so if you kind of feel like you've exhausted most of the found footage options that you have at your disposal lately, and you haven't seen this one yet, I would say give it a go. Don't expect it to be absolutely perfect. Again, it could have been a little bit leaner, I think. But this is still a very solid watch, even if the subject will make some people feel a little bit squeamish and uncomfortable. But then again, if you don't like uncomfortable scenarios at all, why are you watching horror movies? That's about all I have for this one. Keep your eyes tuned to the channel for more content very soon. Thanks as ever for watching. I love having all your support, and I will catch you all later.